Hi guys, this is Rakshit Thakka and I'll be presenting a paper on genetic algorithms for evolving deep neural networks. So this is a topic I recently came across and I found it to be really, really interesting. And this is something which will be really useful if we are building the uh, building applications for it. So let's, I'll be starting with a general introduction. So uh, what are neural networks? I don't think I need to define this as we all know what this are. Uh, but yeah, so it's neural networks is a system which is modeled after our brain, uh, how it works. So given a set of inputs, it gives some output by teaching itself what is happening inside. So for example, let's say uh, if we are given example images which have been manually labeled as cat or not cat. So these results are used to train the network and given an image to the network, it will automatically classify it as if it's a cat or not a cat. The good thing is it doesn't need any a priori knowledge. So that saves a lot of time for the. So moving to neurons, the building blocks of ANNs. So neurons is the brains behind the brains. So they are the elementary units in any artificial neural network. Uh, a neuron receives one or more inputs, sums them to produce an output, which is passed through a nonlinear actuation function. So when neural networks can learn on the learn on their own, then why do we need techniques to optimize them? Why do we need to evolve the network? Simple answer because it's not an all powerful system. Also training is really damn expensive. So even though networks can do a lot on their own, they can't do everything. Uh, for example, neural networks can get stuck on local optimas if they're not configured properly. So instead of going for the global optima, they get stuck on a local local optima, which is not something we want. Uh, so yeah, we use a lot of libraries like TensorFlow, Theano, Cafe to build neural networks and all of these libraries, they have a lot of inbuilt APIs which accept a lot of parameters like activation function, network optimizer, drop, dropper probability, the number of neurons in a layer, the number of layers and a lot more factors. So it's possible to reduce these factors into a set of possibilities using some uh, best practices, but you will still be left with a lot of options. So how do you go about making a network which has the best parameters? The most natural responses is brute force. So you will uh, generate several different networks, each with its own set of parameters. And then from that, you will find out which one is the best. But this is not practical. So even if, you, if you're training large networks, it takes days, sometimes months to train one large network. And that's not mentioning the hardware and the electric supply cost behind that. So this is where optimization techniques like genetic algorithms come in. So let's explore that. So, okay, as in nature, only the strongest survive. So what's that? That's evolution. So for in computer science and operational research, uh, genetic alg algorithm is an algorithm of natural selection, uh, which is commonly used to generate high quality solutions for optimization and search problems by relying on bio inspired operators such as mutation, crossover and selection. Now we will explore those so the question here is how is it useful for us so despite a lot of advancements in the last decade in deep learning and artificial intelligence neural networks are still somewhat of a mystery to us it's it's literally a black box we know the equations we know the mathematical operators we uh, that go into it but once the process starts we literally have no idea what's happening inside it uh, for a small network let's say a layer or two for five or 10 neurons, it's possible to trace the uh, trace the processes, what's happening inside, but take a network that involves millions of neurons. It's just not possible for the human mind to comprehend the higher dimensions at which the calculations are taking place. So since we can't, see, since we don't know what's going on, we can't say like what parameters will give the optimal value. And since we've already established that brute force is not a feasible approach, uh, we'll be going for. So the first step, uh, for general algorithms to optimize your net networks, it's initialization. So that's the first generation. For the first generation, since we have no prior data, we'll be generating random species where each species is a combination of the parameters that you want to be optimized. Uh, in certain cases, a prior information can be used to reduce the number of species, uh, which further decreases the uh, time. The next step is performance evalu ev uh, evaluation. It's done by designing a fitness function. Fitness function is nothing but a function which decides on a metric, which is responsible for measuring the performance of different species. 
so that's used to later rank the species like which one is the strongest of all the third step is selection so once the fitness values are assigned we order them by the rank the higher the value the higher the rank so one of the approach uh, okay we usually go for randomly selecting additional species like let's say we say the top 20% of the species okay that's done after that we also additionally select random species so as to encourage diversity the reasoning is uh, let's just let's say a species that didn't perform well in this generation it doesn't mean that its offspring won't perform well in the following generations so this is sometimes observed in nature like where it's survival of a species just by luck it's not because they're strong it's just luck so the step 4 is crossover so crossover the biological term is just reproduction so here we generate species for the next genera generation by selecting two species from the same generation so we randomly select the chromosome from the parents uh, which is gen which is uh, observed by a probabilistic, probabilistic function so we combine those parameters chromosomes to generate a new species the next step is mutation so mutation is done like okay even for humans or any animal it's not an exact replica okay so we have we undergo some mutations for uh, which is necessary for evo uh, evolution so mutation replaces a chromosome with some random value defined in search space or an ad additional value for example null or zero which is used to disable a neuron which is called dropout or it's used to dis disable a particular so let's take an example for now uh, we'll take four parameters to design a neural network so first of all is number of layers that's a network depth the second is neurons per layer that's a network width uh, the third is dense layer activation function which function to use the fourth one is network optimizer so which optimizer function so here are the steps for the example which we will be using so we'll in initialize n random networks to create our population then we will score each network using our fitness function so since it's an image classification task we will use classification accuracy or fitness function so after that we sort all the networks in a population by the score that is accuracy we'll keep a percentage of the top networks which become a part of the next generation and is will be used for breeding children we'll also be randomly keeping a few of the non top networks uh, again so this is used to encourage uh, diversity and to increase the lucky combinations so which prevents us from getting stuck in a local maximum okay so now that we have decided which networks to keep we perform mutation on them uh, so yeah after that that's we perform we perform crossover we breed the new species and the process repeats until and unless the uh, there's no significant increase in the performance that that's the point where we can stop so the data set we'll be using here is relatively simple but it's not an easy it's the cifar 10 data set okay so it's the network the mlp which we'll be using it's not going to give a very good accuracy but it will it's enough for the scope of this example a uh, cnn would be a better choice a far better choice but for the example the mlp so here are the results for the brute force the time taken to fi find the optimal network is 63 hours with an accuracy of 56.03% for the genetic algorithm the time taken is 7 hours with an accuracy of 56.56% the hyperparameters are more or less the same uh, but there's one thing you can observe the neurons in the genetic algorithm are 5 and 2 whereas neurons for brute force algorithm are 7 6 8 so what conclusions can we draw here genetic algorithm was 9 times faster than the brute force to arrive at almost the same accuracy it's 9 times okay like that's really 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 fast also genetic algorithm resulted in a more sparse network it discarded the unnecessary neurons which makes both training and testing faster so the example illustrated was an application of genetic algorithm at a very higher abstract layer usually when you go to the industry when you are or in the research sector you don't use you don't don't really use the higher library apis to make your own networks you handcraft each neuron each layer according to its specifications so at this point since you have a lot of parameters to tune brute force is definitely not a good idea okay so genetic algorithms they play a major role here to decide the best values for those parameters it can significantly decrease the time plus it will give you a far better accuracy so yeah that's it thank you